Oh, here we have him. We have Optimus strolling through the workplace. I guess this is the lab, according to uh, the posting. And uh, you'll notice there are no, uh, no, nothing holding him up, no harnesses, no, uh, uh, nothing to uh, keep him from falling over. His gait is improving. He's now uh, at about half the speed of a human, according to uh, Scott Walters uh, in various postings today. Um, it looks like he might be, uh, according to John, John uh, uh, Gibbs, John Gibbs says that his gait is really, really good right now, and his posture and everything is getting better and better and better. So in all ways and every way that I can think of, what we've got here is pretty amazing and moving along uh, towards what we're all hoping for, which is a, you know, a fantastically working robot. So um, uh, lots more news today. Let me, uh, let me get on to the rest of it here. Um, also, just continuing with the bot story, we have improved our vest. Oh, this is, by the way, from uh, Milan Kovac. Uh, said, this is our fastest gate ever at 0.6 meters per second, which is about a 30% speed boost since our last video in December. We've improved our vestibular system, our foot trajectory, and our ground contact logic. We've upgraded our motion planner and made cuts to the loop latency across the bot. I understand almost all of that. How about you? Help me. Tell me what all of that means in the comments below. Optimus is more stable and more confident overall, even during turns. We also added a slight torso and arm sway. If these challenges speak to you, then join our amazing team. <laughs> All right. And then this on uh, regarding the Cybertruck today, last call on CNBC. It's more of a real SUV adventure pickup than anything on the road, says Wall Street Journal auto columnist Dan Neal after his 48-hour thrashing of a, TS of a Tesla Cybertruck. It's the hardest darn steal I've ever seen. Well, and this is Randy Kirk, and in a second, we're going to take a look at that article in a lot of detail. I think you're going to find it exciting and very entertaining. This guy can really write. Also, a while ago today, I dropped a video which has commenters, several of them saying, it's my best video ever. It is uh, talking about Elon and some of his capabilities, some of his superpowers. I think you're going to want to watch it. If you didn't already see it, I will... At the very end, I'll put that card up in case you haven't seen it already. And then, of course, I'd love to have you like and subscribe and hit the notify button because, you know, tomorrow morning, I'm going to be doing a story about the decline of the entire automobile in industry or just about everybody except Tesla and BYD being down in units and or volumes. Extremely interesting story. That'll be tomorrow morning. Anyway. Let's dig into the, oh, uh, would you like to buy some of those Cybertruck bottle openers? And maybe you'd like to join Patreon. Those would be two really good ideas you might want to consider. All right, here's the rest of the article, or not, not the whole thing, but a lot of it anyway. All right, the title was, I gave Tesla's Cybertruck a 48-hour thrashing. It, parentheses, mostly survived. It says here that the elusive Cybertruck is one of the most polarizing vehicle debuts in history, but what's it like to actually drive one? As the rain-soaked trail collapsed and the Tesla Cybertruck began sliding towards a ravine, whence there appeared to be no hope of recovery, I considered my options. I could return to my first love, the theater, <laughs> or I could call a tow truck, which could be suspended from a helicopter in order to get it in there. I considered just gunning it, counting on the truck's four-wheel steering and 520 pounds of, of, of uh, uh, pound feet of electro torque to claw back up the embankment. So I did that. And then swash, the truck came to a rest against an oak tree in a shower of leaves hung up at about 45 degrees on the diagonal. My co-pilot, 16-year-old daughter Roz, checked in, you okay, dad? But dad was not okay. He was furious with himself because just five minutes before he had made a big deal about getting out and checking the top of blind crests, especially if you're off-roading solo. Remember that, Roz. Well, yeah. So apparently he's got his, he got up the hill, uh, went, uh, almost got to the very top, got into some muck, couldn't quite get there, decided to go for it anyway on a blind, uh, a blind crest and ended up up against a tree. Well, anyway, 
He goes on to say, our borrowed $100,000 Cybertruck was caught in the branches of a tree like a, <laughs> I don't even know what he said here, a gourmet grill. Anyway, we crawled out of the passenger side window. The 48 volt window actuators all still functioned smartly, I noted. The truck's bottom heavy weight distribution made it quite hard to tip. That's lucky. What I really needed now was a cyber shovel and a cyber winch without which I was going to be cyber screwed, he says. Imagine there is no Elon. It isn't hard to do. The Tesla brand appears nowhere on the outside of the truck. Likewise, suspend whatever disbelief you have in Cybertruck's commercial upside. Although Tesla has probably already recouped the development costs just in media obsession alone. This is a phenomenal piece of engineering, he goes on to say. Sure, many of the heroics, the enormous aluminum Giga castings, the tool hard steel body panels, the world's largest and fat, flattest windshield. These were only necessary in order to build what seemed at the outset unbuildable. Cybertruck isn't quite the machine Musk and designer Franz von Holtz, Holtzhausen set out to make four years ago, but it's still years ahead of anybody else. Oh, yeah, but it's still years ahead of anybody else. This is the Wall Street Journal. We're finally getting some articles from the mainstream media about this truck. Well, before my last drive two weeks ago, the only thing I knew for sure was that the cyber truck made people crazy. And that was my test drive. Before my test drive, I, I, all I knew was it made people crazy. Consider the widely shared opinion that it's ugly as compared to traditional pickups. <laughs> Worst beauty pageant ever. Still others have read in the semiotics of toxic masculinity. The turret-like greenhouse suggested a paramilitary vehicle. Tesla CEO Elon Musk doubled down on this by associ this association by touting the body's panel's resistance to small arms fire. What, what a maroon. Anyway, my hot take, he says. Listen to this now. This is hot take. The cyber truck's sensibility belongs to the consequence-free world of gaming and graphic interfaces. It's ballistic resistance, a god mode brought to life. It's not militarism, it's infantilism. <laughs> From any angle, the Cybertruck defies a lifetime of expectations. The auto-cultural con conventions of the three-box pickup design is like a modernist house suddenly appearing in the neighborhood of ne neo-colonial mini-mansions. Uh-oh. Here comes the, the Homeowners Association with torches and pitchforks. The most ridiculous gripes have targeted the ultra-hard stainless steel body panels. Reports of surface oxidation have been gleefully megaphoned by social media at, as cyber rust. You can see the fingerprints. <laughs> so these have been three of the major things. I like all, out of everything that the truck can do, what we're hearing from folks is surface oxidation, uh, we uh, so the stainless steel body panels can get fingerprints. Anyway, he says to all of that, brah, do you even hear yourself? First, stainless steel never was or will be stainless. Ask the Navy. Second, most bully four by fours you see on the road never leave asphalt for fear of scratching their glossy fingerprint resistant surface. You're going around dressed like Porter Wagoner at the Grand Old Opry and you think you're a real cowboy? <laughs> the Cybertruck's greatest sin, listen to this, the greatest sin of the Cybertruck is that it will force trad truckers to confront this cognitive dissonance, exposing full-size pickups and adventure 4 by 4s as the prisses they are. Can you still say that? Anyway, two hours, I can still say it. Can, two hours and one rescue vehicle later, our Cybertruck emerged from the brush unscathed but from some, but from, for hello, easy for you to say, but for some wood splitters wedged in the door front frame. Had we been in any other modern off-roader, our next stop would have been a paint and body shop. There you go. Any other off-roader onto the paint and body shop. The rules for my test drive were no rules. I downloaded the Tesla app, met the truck in Los Angeles. I only needed to return it to the factory in Fremont, California in 48 hours. Actually, I could have used a little bit more of a briefing. I didn't learn 
that the front and rear locking mechanical differentials were not activated until I had the thing fetched upon a concrete culvert on an obstacle course and I had to get dragged off. Tesla will be activating the lockers with an over-the-air update in the coming weeks. Oh yeah, with an over-the-air update, yeah. All right, nor did I appreciate how long the wheelbase is. It's 150 inches. The adaptive air suspension can raise the belly of the beast more than 17 inches off the ground. But the stretch wheelbase and low breakover angle mean the Cybertruck will drag bottom on black diamond trails. Beneath all of that, and without intending to, I beat the heck out of the bottom of the Cybertruck, which happens to be where the battery pack lives, protected by a double layer of the same cyber steel used in the body. Afterwards, in the damp parking lot in Fremont, I climbed under the truck to inspect the damage. A few scratches, not even a dent. What sorcery is this, he says. <laughs> so now we go on to the admissions. He says, of course, I admit I had been the wrong, had the wrong idea about Cybertruck going in. I expect, expected it to be an off-road performance pickup when actually it's an on-road performance pickup. Considering the tires, the very same 35-inch all-terrain tires that allow the Cybertruck to ride like an enchanted maglev lev up the Interstate 5 are off. I can't read. Some of the stuff is so clever that I can't even read it. Uh, whatever that means, surprisingly helpless due to the fact they are inflated to 51 PSI, nowhere near the ebony of the on the, hard, on the hardness scale. The tire's lower rolling resistance improves range, but comes at the expense of traction. The fix in the field is to air down, but then you have to air back up again before hitting the road. I forgot to pack my shop compressor, which you could have had the shop compressor plugged right into the Cybertruck and, and aired up again. On the interstate, listen to this now, on the interstate, it is cyber fabulous, effortlessly powerful, quiet, and fun to drive. Fast? I promise your hunting dogs will never look at you the same way again. The advanced drive-by-wire four-wheel steering turns from lock to lock and 180 degrees, as we know, like a go-kart. cart. That takes about five minutes of neural net, net... Getting used to it is what he's trying to say. Takes about five minutes of neural remapping. But after that, it's amazing. It's great, he actually says. I only wish they made Cybertruck for Earthlings. <laughs> yeah, he ends the story. So anyway... This is the very first major national magazine, major national news organization to do a full on uh, report on Tesla's Cybertruck. This won't hurt the stock coming up in the weeks ahead. And now this is causing other people to take a look, of course. All right. So we have from Rohans Patel. Um, no doubt. This is on on uh, on uh, regarding the Cybertruck. No doubt we will sell Cybertruck in Canada. We have insanely huge interest. Have to pop, have to file some routine paperwork, but hoping that can be wrapped up soon. So good for you guys in Canada. From Sawyer Merritt, a couple of things here. Sawyer says first of all, news: Tesla will be reporting reportedly start Giga Mexico construction on March third. This is according to the governor of Nuevo Leon. Samuel Garcia. Now, I, I the fact that Sawyer is buying into this, he's usually really, really careful before he says anything. This is not from this is not from the uh, leadership at Tesla. This is from Samuel Garcia, the governor of Nuevo Leon. Uh, yeah, so we have to take it with at least one grain of salt. Also from Sawyer, he's saying that Tesla installed an average of 450 power walls globally per day. 450 power walls. Per day over the last seven months, that would be about 2.5 million per year, or close to 1 billion per year just for power walls. That's in addition to our expected 15 billion from mega packs. So that's, and that those, of course, will be at much higher margins than the mega packs. All right, then we've got this from Fortune. The BYD of Vietnam. Just reported a huge loss for 2023, a whopping 2.4 billion. So you guys have all heard about VinFast. They have hit the, you know, 
tremendous amount of uh, news when they first uh, started offering their stock on the market. But listen to, listen to this story. This is just amazing. So VinFast revenue growth is fast, but the electrical vehicle makers costs grow faster. Vietnam's Tesla Challenger is building a $2 billion manufacturing plant in North Carolina, is poised to break ground on another in India's Tamil Nadu, and has yet another plant in Indonesia. Come on, Tesla. Catch up, man. This week, VinFast reported a net loss in the fourth quarter of $650 million, up 3.4 from the previous quarter for the full year. VinFast net loss reached $2.4 billion, which is up 14.7% from 2022. On the other hand, revenue grew significantly, jumping 91% to $1.2 billion last year from 2022. So they're right now about one one-hundredth the size of Tesla. And the company plans to deliver 100,000 cars this year, up from about 35,000 last year. So they're planning to triple their numbers this year over last year. VinFast is part of Vin Group, a conglomerate led by Famnat, Famnat Vuong, Vuong. Vietnam's richest man, the car maker, launched in 2017, producing traditional gas power vehicles before uh, uh, pivoting to EVs five years later. It began selling its VinFast VF8 in the U.S. last March, but critics panned the vehicle, citing inconsistent handling and poor performance. Despite that, the company's shares surged 504% over a six-day period after its IPO in April <laughs> because, well, listen to this, VinFast market cap briefly exceeded before a dramatic plunge, that of Ford, Volkswagen, and General Motors combined from a peak of $190 billion. <laughs> the company's market cap now stands at about $11 billion, which is still a lot. Remember how many times I've asked the question. You've got them sitting at $11 billion. You've got Rivian now down to about $11 billion. After that traumatic drop last week, it's now worth about $11, $12, $12 somewhere in that range, billion. You've got Lucid, still worth, I forget, $4, $5, $6 billion. billion. And yet this, the market doesn't give any real value to Tesla's energy business or tes Tesla's uh, charging stations or Tesla's Optimus bot. Anyway, it drives me nuts when I hear these numbers. All right. So um, that is the story on uh, VinFast. I think, they, but again, only about 2% right now. Uh, uh, I thought I had that down here someplace. Only 98% of the stock is owned by uh, Vin, the, the, the guy that owns the thing. Um, 98%, so only 2% is owned by the public, which is why you get these massive swings um, in, in, uh, in the stock value. Um, but what you're gonna see is he's gonna now increase that, he says, that coming later this year. So that'll be interesting to see how many people jump on that. All right, as promised, I have that video from earlier today. As an investor, one of the most critical issues, maybe the most critical issue that should determine the value, how you look at, how you determine the value of a company and whether you really want to get involved in it is what? It's the leadership and the people. It is the top from the top down. How What's the quality of, of the folks that are leading it and the people that are working there? In this video, I look at 15 superpowers that Elon has that should give you great comfort about the future if you're currently an investor. Here is that card right here, okay? And then, of course, as always, love to have you come join me tomorrow morning. So hit like, subscribe, and notify. I'll have probably two, maybe three videos tomorrow. Have the morning video where we'll talk about the uh, the, uh, the 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 major uh, major auto companies who are losing unit sales, using dollar volume, losing both, and in some cases their stock has gone almost nowhere, or in some cases gone down over the last decade. So, um, you know, we'll look at people like Mary Barra and why are people still interested in, <laughs> in supporting her leadership? Anyway, well, all that tomorrow morning. I think you'll enjoy that video. And then tomorrow night, as always, we'll talk about what's coming up in the in the markets, what kind of reports. We've got the PCE next week. That's going to be very, very interesting. Going to make for a very interesting week. So please join me by hitting notify. And then I'd love to have you join uh, Patreon. Uh, remember, you can get in as low as $3. Y'all asked me for that $3 level. I set it up. And so I'd love to have you join even at the $3 level. But if you join at the $5 level or the $10 level, remember, you get free books. One free book for the $5 level or both books if you want, if you join at the $10 level. 
or you can get a Cybertruck bottle opener if you join at the $10 level, completely free. No freight, no nothing, send it to you free. Or you can pay $25 for it if you'd like to get one. And all that information is in the description below. All right, that's all I got for you today. It has been great talking to you.